Hello guys, uh, this is Miss Kanji. Uh, I'm here with um, a video which was which I'm gonna make upon request. There's someone who requested this video of entrepreneurship to be explained. So this is why I'm making this video. Though the video will be a bit lengthy, and I hope you'll be able to stay with me until the end. So I'll be able to explain the business plan and um, in form of an essay question, we'll look at this together. Okay, please, if you have any comments, leave them in the comment section. If you have any requests for a topic that you may not understand, you can leave it in the comment section so that I can be able to make a video for you in terms of leadership and management. Okay, so we continue. We'll look at um, the essay question, okay? So this is the stem of the question. The stem of the question says, uh, Miss Kanji wants to open up a facility to supplement her income, and she needs information about financial administrative management system for her to succeed and comply with financial regulations, okay? Then what is our essay question? Our essay question... Our part A is defined the following terms. Number one, entrepreneurship. Number two, partnership. And then B, state five concepts of entrepreneurship. Then C, discuss the concepts, I mean the steps involved in developing a business plan. Then our part D has got two parts. The first part being state five key, key features of firms. That you would share with Miss Kanji to ensure she remains compliant. This compliance is in relation to the business that she wants to do. Then D2 state five ways of resource mobilization for a business. Okay, so if you look at this question, it is not specific to say maybe human resource mobilization, financial resource mobilization. So you can just look at the types of um the different types of resources and how you're going to mobilize them for your business. Okay, so we'll look at the definition. So, um, like I always say, when you want to define something in terms of leadership and management, always try to define it in your own words. Okay, so this is my, my definition according to the types of definitions that I saw. So this one goes like the process of identifying an opportunity in which a person can make a business and make profits from that business. Okay. So if you look for keywords in relation to the topic that you're looking at, then you'll be able to define that that uh, term in your own words. As long as those key terms are there, okay, your definition will be correct. So let's look at other definitions of uh, entrepreneurship. So for example, the first definition here is the process through which individuals identify opportunities, allocate resources, and create value. Okay, so if you look at this definition, the keywords there is identify opportunity, allocate resource, then you make value out of those uh, um, goods and services that you are that you are um, that you are serving to the to the community. Okay, another definition: uh, the capacity and willingness to develop, organize, and manage a business venture along with any of its risks in order to make a profit. Okay, so if you look at this definition. Um, the, the key terms, okay, um, develop, organize, manage a business, and then you take up any risks, okay. Then another definition, the process of identifying and starting a business venture, sourcing and organizing the required resources, and taking both the risks and rewards associated with that venture, okay. So if you look at this definition again, the main or the key words in this definition is, um, of course, you are, you are identifying, um, you identify um, or an idea, you have an idea, then you start up a business venture, you source for funds, you organize those funds, and then you take up the risks, risks and rewards associated with that business, okay? Then what is partnership? So partnership it's a simple definition. Um, a business owned by two or more people who share profits and losses. This one is straightforward. Partnership, you can't start a business alone. That is not a partnership. So where you 
two people come together and start a business that now becomes a partnership okay so you should also remember a partnership should exist between two or more people and not more than 20 okay if it becomes more than 20 that's no longer a partnership it could be a corporation or a conglomerate or something like that okay then our part b says explain any five concepts used in entrepreneurship okay so with this we look at the five concepts okay though i've got seven here so opportunity identification value creation risk management resourcefulness uh, networking and sales and marketing then we have financial literacy so even without explanation you should be able to understand even just in simple english what opportunity identification is okay this one is straightforward this is straightforward english value creation risk management resourcefulness networking like working with others sales and marketing okay so you should be able to understand these terms explain them and put examples okay so where it says five concepts you can use any of the five if you can't remember the last two even the first five are okay okay so what is opportunity identification this involves spotting a potential business opportunity and then taking advantage of it okay so here you want to to spot an idea or a business opportunity where um maybe there's a need which has a reason okay for example you're in the community like this lady miss can you wants to start up a business okay as an entrepreneur she's a nurse maybe for example right? then you say in relation to her field what opportunity can she identify in the community let's say there's high rise of um, blood pressure okay among the elderly folks then she can just start up a clinic where she she's able to charge people in relation to um checking their bp okay she has identified an opportunity and she's able to make money out of it okay so this could be something that people are struggling to do themselves or something that they are willing to pay for okay as someone else does it for them you can start up maybe a, mas a massage parlor okay because people are willing to pay for it that is an opportunity that you have identified and you can create uh, money out of that okay then value creation value creation this is creating value for a product or a service okay which can help you to attract customers and win them over from the competition so here you want to add value or you want to add something to your business idea or business venture that will make you to have an advantage over others okay for example let's say you are you are giving uh you are giving out a service in relation to bp bp check bp checks now let's say there's another person in the same street who also does bp checks now what competitive advantage or what value are you going to add or what um amenities are you going to add in relation to your business that is going to attract other people okay to come and flock to your clinic and not go on the opposite side that is value creation let's say you serve tea as the people are waiting okay you have added value and people will come some people can just come just for that free tea okay so that is value creation so an effective value creation addresses a specific customer need or pinpoints and tells the customer how the product or service will solve that problem okay then sometimes let's say you add um, iec education information education communication iec after someone has already taken uh, their bp reading okay which may not be done at the other facility just because of that you have added value to the services you are giving someone will come to you and learn more okay other than going on the other side okay risk management so this one is all about taking risk as an entrepreneur you should be able to take up risks okay you should be able to uh, foresee risk and uh, manage that risk so 
you need to be able to accept the risk and be willing uh, to put everything on the line in order to succeed not where you have um let's say your business fails because of certain risks that you didn't foresee and then you just plunge to the bottom and you forget about your business you should be able to take up risks and manage them accordingly and uh, proceed or succeed and move forward okay so this means being prepared for the possibility of failure that is risk management so as an entrepreneur you should always anticipate risk and try to find ways to manage those risks let's say you don't have um you've started your business you are doing your bp checks and then one of the risks uh, that you can you can foresee is maybe other people also opening up such such facilities okay whereby they will go the people will be swayed and go to the other other facilities so what uh, opportunities or what um ways or methods are you going to put up in relation to uh, trying to increase or add value to your business such that people will be able to come to you and not go to the others okay then resourcefulness being able to use available resources and to create products that may be that may bring gains through creativity so this is about um using what is available okay using what is available to create either new products or you are adding value to already existing uh products and services that is being resourceful okay so example let's say um let's say you find you live near a, a garage where they change tires these tires they just throw them away then as an entrepreneur you look at those tires and then you 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 polish them you paint them you put maybe a glass over them and you make a table or you make swings out of them okay and you are even selling so you have used what is available and recreated that and made them valuable okay that is being resourceful that's what we're talking about networking is all about uh working with others as an and an entrepreneur you cannot succeed by working alone okay so for example if you have um you have a farm you need someone to market your farm if you can't do it yourself okay that is networking you work with others maybe you are working with someone who is in uh, uh advertising agency okay they will be able to adver- advertise your farm and then you 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 have more customers so it involves making connections with other people who can help you so it involves uh making connections with other people who can help you with your business so like i said you have a farm or you have a clinic how are you going to make your clinic known so you need to be able to connect with other people who can help you uh make your vision reality okay so if you are working uh in a clinic for you to attract more customers you may need someone who knows how to market that business okay that is networking that is if you can't do it yourself okay so this includes investors suppliers customers anyone else who can help move your business forward so if you don't have money you call for investors maybe you need certain supplies you need uh that network okay then sales and marketing so this one is all about marketing and marketing strategies selling strategies okay understanding sales and marketing strategies which may help you boost your business so for example marketing platforms you have a farm in the in the bush somewhere how are you going to market those those products that you are that you are growing there let's say you go on facebook there are a lot of farmers who are advertising their products on facebook okay on whatsapp on twitter on any other platform that you know that these people can be able to buy and then you also need to look at your audience on those platforms okay if they are always if they are only old people on that platform meaning your products and services should suit a type of um audience okay otherwise you'll be selling on a on a on a you'll be selling on a wrong platform okay 
so know how best to package the product in order to increase the sales as well okay so how you package your product can also attract more customers to you to, to buying or receiving the services that you are offering okay so know your target audience and how to meet their needs as well then financial literacy here is all about you as an entrepreneur knowing financial or having education about financial financials in relation to your business okay so knowledge about financials and how to use and spend the finances that you have acquired so you need to know how to budget for example you need to know how to reinvest you need to know how to save you need to know how to um which products to buy where uh, where to spend money which parts to invest and all that okay so how to save how to source money how to invest and what business to invest in as well as how to plan for losses okay have all that in mind in relation to your financial education okay so our next question explain five principles used in entrepreneurship our first principle is creativity what is creativity so as an entrepreneur you need to be creative you think outside of the box okay so what is creativity the spark that drives the development of new ways to do business that is creativity okay having that spark always having that um those ideas flowing okay then you'll be able to 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 move forward so it is the push that innovation it is a push for innovation and improvement it is continuous learning questioning thinking outside of the prescribed formulas so you are thinking outside the box you are looking at tires others are just looking at wasted uh, tires which cannot work you think outside the box you see a table you see swings you see maybe you make rubbers for shoes for example okay you are thinking outside the box <clears throat> where others are unable to see you see an opportunity that is being creative okay then dedication so dedication as an entrepreneur you need to dedicate put more hours to your business especially if you are just starting a business there's no way you have started a business and you only use maybe one hour you dedicate only one hour in a day how is that business going to start off it can't okay so at the beginning maybe you put you say i'll work on it every 10 hours i'll dedicate it to this then the other 10 and the other 10 hours i'll use it for other thing okay so 12 hours a day or more even seven days a week especially in the beginning to get the endeavor off the ground okay so here if you want to take off your business okay you need to put in more hours unlike when maybe your business has already taken off you have enough profits and all that your business is just it's well off there's no need for you to spend 12 hours no you just need to now just sit and start making more ideas of how to improve your business and you don't need 24 hours for that okay so planning and ideas must be joined by hard work to succeed then dedication makes it happen if you're not dedicated your business is not going to take off okay so as an entrepreneur you also need to be determined so this is the extremely strong desire to achieve success that is determination so no matter what comes your way okay you need to be resistant okay that is being uh, determined so for example um the ability for you to push forward to that uh, 10th phone call you've started calling today the person is not picking up you keep on keep on keep until they see the persistence okay they will know that mm -mm, this person is really really serious about what they want okay and you'll be able to succeed okay despite any setbacks that may come your way whether it is money whether it is whatever you need to be able to push through even if you have a crisis the ability to push through that crisis that is determination okay then as an entrepreneur you also need to be flexible the ability to move quickly in response to changing market needs okay so here let's say for example um you are in you are a musician your music your music was uh from 1990s and all those things and 
the people in that time really loved your music okay and then this is 2000 you are still here you are still wanting to make you still want to make music but the market need has changed because people want to hear people who are rapping even if they they are not rapping about anything sensible but as long as they they go to the they they, they have a nice beat and all that they're able to listen to that song now here you are you are still playing music from 1992. how are you going to meet the market needs of these youngsters who are always wanting you know loud music and all that so you need to change if you want to succeed that is being uh, an entrepreneur that is being flexible you change in relation to the market needs okay then passion what is passion passion is what gets the entrepreneur started and keeps them there it keeps on making you uh, push on you keep moving forward okay so here is about um, convincing others about what your vision is all about okay have the passion or have the love for your business without that they won't see the drive okay they won't see that um that that love for your business they won't see you as being uh, able to start up something okay so it can't be substituted for planning but it will help them to stay focused and get others to look at their plans okay where you are passionate about something you'll be able to persuade people to even invest in your business okay without that passion you can't succeed okay self-confidence so as an entrepreneur you also need to be confident okay so comes from thorough planning which re reduces uncertainty and the levels of risk it also comes from expertise so self-confidence here was simply saying as an entrepreneur the business that you have started you need to be confident about it okay you've started a clinic where you're taking bp checks and then someone just comes to say ah you in this community you can't succeed there are no people here okay so because of the expertise that you have and the knowledge that you have in relation to the business you can be able to convince those people those skeptics to say no because of this this and this i know this business is going to to succeed that is being confident okay despite others maybe looking down on you and all that okay so it gives entrepreneur the ability to listen without being easily swayed or intimidated despite others having bad views or negative reviews about your business you need to stay confident okay have confidence in your business and you you remain focused okay then leadership so the ability to create rules and set goals okay and the capacity to follow through with those rules that you have set okay so for example let's say you say uh, at the beginning of your business you set up rules to say when we make profits 50 percent should go back to the business as an as, as a reinvestment um money then as you start making profits you need to make sure that you keep to those rules otherwise where you just sway you get even maybe 10 percent of the 50 percent you take it somewhere else your business that is the beginning of the downfall of your business okay so you need to set rules and stick to them okay that is leadership and then our next question discuss the steps involved in a business plan okay so so these are the steps involved um in a business plan so here i have two parts of a business plan okay so when you look at this first part and the next part you can choose any but at least the first seven steps should be there in your business plan so the first thing that you need to have in your business plan is an executive summary okay so this summary includes overall business structure so for example the organogram the hierarchy and all that the goals of your organization the mission statement the philosophy values products and services that you offer financial projections short term long term okay if you have any if your business is not starting like 
is that it's not just starting from the ground up it has been in existence in relation to financial projection you can even put maybe losses and gains over time and why you even put maybe reasons why you gain so much and what made you lose so much and all that okay then the next one is a business description so outline the present outlook as well as future possibilities of your business so you may also provide information on the various markets in uh, in your industry new products and services being developed who are your competitors and um, how is it that you are you are you are succeeding in your business and all that okay then marketing strategies so here you look at uh, you do your market analysis uh, you also come up with um, how is your market how are you able to succeed in relation to the products and services that you have how are your shares okay how are your sales over time how are your profits profit margins and all that okay then competitive analysis here we're looking at competitive advantage what competitive advantage do you have over those others maybe with the same um, products and services as you what are their weaknesses what are their strengths what are your weaknesses and what are your strengths okay in relation to the products and services that you're offering so here you're looking at the competitive advantage that you have if there are any barriers you need to find ways to eliminate those barriers or else your business is going to collapse okay then design and development of a plan so provides investors a description of the products design how your products are developed okay then the marketing strategies and all that creates development um, creates a development budget that will enable the company to reach its goals so here you want to see in relation to um, the products that you have what are how do you design them okay if you have your service how how do you run those services okay a proper uh, in-depth description of who, what uh, products and services that you have at that company okay then operations and management plan highlights the logistics of the organization so here you are looking at operational how do you manage to make sure that everything is done everything is shipped everything is produced at the same time or within a specified time okay so how do you manage to move your products and services to a certain location even after you have made those uh, products okay then how are, are tasks assigned to each individual or to each department who does what okay the expenses incurred in relation to those uh, operations then financial factors here of course you look you are looking at financial uh, knowledge okay how do you generate your funds where do those funds come from if there's a loan how who is financing that loan and all that how is the money how do you spend your money okay you need to highlight an in-depth of how you spend your money maybe quarterly or annually okay then the profits that you make okay how you make those profits and how much profits is expected every year this is important in relation to investors investors need to know to say okay at the end of the year this is how much we make at least in the past five years we've made this much consistently okay and then they'll be willing to invest in your business okay so this is another business plan in relation to my own uh, research okay so executive summary so the first thing you need to put just like in the previous uh, business plan is an executive summary okay so in this executive summary you summarize just put highlight okay what your business does just put an overview of what your business does um financial projections of your business okay then mission statement brief description of products and services that you're offering a summary of financial growth plan okay how are your 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 profits what is your expectation of your profits okay then company description here you give a, a snapshot of your business so what you can include for example business name okay 
the address and location of your business, um, the people involved in that business. So, for example, here, putting up a structure, an organogram, who reports to who, okay? Then their skills and their, their um, uh, expertise and all that, okay? Then under the same business plan or business or company structure, you can also add what type of business do you have? Is it uh, owned by one person? Is it a partnership? Is it maybe you have different businesses coming together and all that? Okay. Then our next part, you need to add your objectives for your business. Okay. So what are your goals as a business entity? What are your, your objectives? Long-term, short-term goals, you add them there. Okay. Then... Uh, a business strategy that deals on how you plan to achieve those goals. So you set up your goals. You also put explanations saying the next maybe two years, this is how we're going to do this. And uh, you put up explanation as how you are going to achieve those goals. This one is important if you, if you have uh, investors. If you have investors who want to invest in your business, you need to put up those um, strategies on how you are going to achieve those goals. Okay, then the fourth, the fourth part, um, describing your products and services. Here, you need to describe them in detail. So, in this, you need to add uh, uh, the following one, an explanation of how your products and services work, the pricing of those products and services, the customers, who are your customers, okay, the supply chain, in order to... Um, how do you source if you have uh, somewhere where you get your your supplies for example how do you move those um, supplies from the supplier to the end users and packaging involving okay in in that um, the strategy then selling strategy how do you sell those products and services which platforms do you sell those products and services who is your your target or your target audience how do you distribute those uh, products and services? Okay, then market research. So here, market analysis. You look at the market in relation to the products and services that you are offering, and then you see who are your competitors, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses, and all that. Okay, and what competitive advantage do you have in relation to, to, to the products and services that you have? Okay, then... Um, marketing and sales plan. So here you need to have a marketing and selling strategy of your products and services. Okay. So how do you plan to persuade customers to buy your products, for example? Okay. How are you going to gain customer loyalty? Because you may have different organizations out there who may be serving the same products and services. Okay. So you need to have smart money moves. How are you going to make sure that your business survives despite competition out there? Okay, so get access to business insights and recommendation and experts. Okay, you need to get knowledge from experts. Maybe you need to find someone who knows how to market businesses, okay, products and services. Then you'll be able to, to have a competitive advantage over others. Then the, you need to also add financial financial projections. So involves um, an outline of how your business will generate enough profits to repay maybe, for example, a loan, okay? Or how are you going to, um, to, to make sure that you make enough profits for investors, okay? So here you provide the business monthly, quarterly, or even annually profits, for example, okay, to your investors. Then you can also add... Um, what are your net profit margins? Okay. What is the current ratio, the measurement of your liquidity ability to repay debts? How are you able to repay debts if you have any loans and all that? Then account receivable turnovers ratio, measurement of how frequently you collect your receivables per year. So receivables are things like um, things that you loan to others and how are you able to get your money back? Okay, so you put up that strategy, not where someone um, borrows something from you as a business and then 
you have no track records of how you're going to get that money back for example okay so you need to have strategies like that then the last part you can add an appendix okay appendix is just supporting documentation for your business this one is important if if you are looking for investors so example of appendices to add things like licenses okay um cvs or resumes for your employees okay um what equipment do you have do you have any permits do you have any patent rights maybe for a certain for a certain drug that you are making okay not where you you are making a certain drug and then someone comes and starts suing you to say this is our product you just stole for us from us so you need to have patent rights to whatever you are making if you are the sole proprietor then bank statements contracts for employees okay and all that okay then our last part that is part d part d had two parts the first part was state five key features that you would share with miss kanji to ensure she remains compliant in relation to the business that she's doing so here you need to understand what farms is what is farms and then these farms okay what is it and what are the key features of farms so farms financial management system so this one is a software that managers use okay to organize or to manage their businesses in relation to expenses payments and all that so the question is asking you to say what are the um what are the key features of farms of this software that these managers use okay so the key features are a lot i'll just highlight um, some of them so this uh, farms the financial administrative management system which managers use should have bank accounts so these bank accounts can be for the organization where maybe the profits or the monies go into then bank accounts for the employees okay so these employees maybe for example salary accounts and all that then automated expense tracking so this one should um is a system which um tracks everything that you are spending okay so that you don't run into a loss you you you'll be able to know to say okay we spent this much this year have we made any losses are we improving are this the products that we bought even uh, important or should we cut our losses and not buy these products anymore so you need to have an expense tracking system okay then you can also have budgeting tools okay this will help you to not overspend monies okay not to lose money unnecessarily so you're budgeting for the right uh, uh, products okay then invest investment tracking every time you make uh, profits you want to reinvest when you are investing you are tracking those investments are they correct are they wrong oh we had invested in that is it giving us any profits okay if you have this tracking system you'll be able to understand or to know how your business is uh, functioning okay then bill payment reminders you may have bills like for example water bills electricity maybe land rates and all that so you need to have this to remind or tax for example you need to pay tax that is also a reminder okay so that you don't fall back on your on your on your credit credit score then credit score monitoring you want to borrow money from other people you also check okay are we eligible to make any to take any money from a bank for example okay then transparency for all sent and received payments okay all these are parts of the farms so i'll just run through the others there are a lot so the first five can do and uh, when you mention those you explain so all these are key features of uh, farms the financial administration management system okay these are also um farms Okay, farms key features. So we'll look at the last part. Okay, for this question, state five ways of resource mobilization for a business. 
So here the question is saying the five ways of resource mobilization. It is not specific to say financial resource mobilization. So it can be human resource mobilization, it can be capital mobilization, it can be mobil so you need to know the type of resources. Then you also need to know how are you going to mobilize those resources. Okay. So number one, the types of resources. We have human resources. So you have you have started a business or you are planning to start a business. How are you going to mobilize the human resource? How are you going to get workers? Okay. So you can get workers through adverts or referrals. Someone knows someone who knows someone. They will uh, bring them to you. Okay. Or you go to a school where they train maybe accountants. You source them in advance as they are about to graduate. That is also another way of um, sourcing for human resource. Okay. Financial resources, there are different types of uh, ways to get financial resources. So here you can get money from salaries, from savings, okay, from friends, from families, from groups who want to invest, okay, group rational financial schemes. These are also known as Silimba, joint ventures where you come together, okay, banks, you get a loan, for example, or investments, okay, government agencies, leasing companies, and all that. Then, um, other types of resources, capital resources, reoccurring resources, such as payroll, rent, mortgage, payments, utilities, supplies, and all that. So, these are recurring. You are renting. You don't have your own um, um, land, for example. You don't have your own property. You are renting. How are you going to get those, those monies for rent? So, that you're not kicked out. Okay? So, these you can get them maybe from a salary, or you can get them from um, a bank loan, and all that. Then material resources, office equipment, furniture, telephones, advertising materials, brochures. How are you going to get money to print those brochures? How are you going to get money to buy that furniture? Okay. Then um, infrastructure resource, building, office space, storage space. How are you going to have this? Okay. So financial mobilization part. So you can get money from a salary, okay, to finance your business. You can get money from savings to finance your business. You can get money from sponsorship from government or individuals. You can get bank loans. You can get money from joint ventures and partnerships. You can get money from group rational financial schemes, also known as Chilimba. You can also get money from bank interest, okay. These are some of the ways that you can get money from okay you can also get money from sale of property you sell uh, a building you raise money maybe to pay off loans and all that okay so i hope this has been helpful i know it has been lengthy okay uh, so thank you for staying up to the end this is miss kanji please subscribe and please share with others it will really help the channel to have more hours. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay.